8% virtual, I have an unbelievable surprise guest speaker for you today, Mr. Brian Tracy, lifelong fan of your work. Thank you so much for agreeing to spend a few minutes with me today. Well, thank you. You know, you you and I um, uh, have, have, what do they say in the, in the movie? We've uh, uh, shed the same blood in the same mud. If you remember that movie, you and I have uh, made our living and come uh, from uh, nowhere uh, to where we are by learning how to sell. And uh, I know that you're a fan of my information on closing. And I remember when I started off in selling, uh, I asked myself the question, and this is really important, is what is the uh, one factor that determines your income more than any other factor? This is called the constraint. It's called the limiting step or the constraint. What is the one factor? And I realized it was my ability to close the sale. Actually, I wasn't afraid to, to make calls. I wasn't afraid to knock on doors. And I did, I, in my first year, I knocked on more than 20,000 doors and got almost 20,000 rejections. And, uh, but I wasn't afraid. I'd just get up in the morning, six o'clock, I'd be out there and make my first call at eight o'clock. My rule was if, uh, they, if they are available, um, I'd be there. And I'd be knocking on doors, at, I would knock on doors until uh, 9, 9.30, 10 o'clock at night. If the light was on, I'd be there. And um, I realized that it was my ability to ask for the order. My ability to close was the, the critical factor. So I gave myself a, a, a goal to become really, really good at closing sales. And I eventually I did. It takes time and it takes a tremendous amount of rejection, but uh, eventually I became better and better and better at it. And my income went up. And there's a wonderful relationship between your income and your confidence, your level of happiness. You start to make a lot of money and you start to be happy. And when you're happy, you have a lot of energy. When you have energy, you're more eager to get out there uh, and make calls. And so I, have, I uh, worked on becoming really good on closing the sale. And the wonderful thing is that I've told more than 5 million people live that you can learn any skill you need to learn to achieve any goal that you need to achieve. And uh, so you can become really, really good at asking for the order. And, uh, and I did. And uh, over time, I uh, made a lot of money as well. But as we were talking about, it's not the money that you make, it's the, uh, the effect that you have on the lives of other people. Absolutely. Yes. I love that. It's, 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 it's amazing too, how you can, it's, it's, it's a choice how good you get at, at closing the deal. And it's amazing. You just talked about how, if you want to be really good, you chose to be really good. You made that decision. Yes. Not everyone's wired that way. Where does that come from to where you commit to doing something and you really follow through and execute? Well, one of the things that we have is that, um, it's the biggest single problem in adult life is the feeling that I'm not good enough. Mm. I'm not good enough. And I've studied this in psychology. Uh, it's what holds people back more than anything else. And so you simply turn it around and say, I am good enough. I can, I can do this. I can learn anything I need to learn. And uh, I have taught this for, for now almost five decades. And one of the things that I found is that uh, our greatest problems in life come from our uh, childhood and, being, and and how we were raised. And so as a parent, are you married, Cody? I am. Yes, sir. You have children? No children yet. No, sir. Well, the, the most important thing as a parent is to continually tell your children how good they are. Tell them how much you love them and tell them how good they are. Yeah. And um, no matter what happens... You tell them the most wonderful words in the world are, you can do it. You can do it. And uh, when you keep telling your kids you can do it, eventually, at a, at a very early age, it's sort of like programming, is you uh, program them to believe, I can do this. I can do anything I put my mind to. Okay. And uh, at the beginning of their lives, they will have so much self-doubt. You say the biggest single problem is self-doubt, is they don't believe in themselves. But you, as their parent, um, are the most important person in their lives. And so, therefore, just, just tell them all the time how good they are and how great they are. And if they make a mistake or they don't do too well, you say, all right, well, uh, pick up and try it again. 
And you can do it. You can do it. You can do it. And that's a wonderful thing for children to hear. And eventually it reaches the point where they it, it, it sort of locks in and they start to believe it. And then after that, nothing can stop them. That's awesome. That's such, such good advice, too, because I, I really believe I, I had a I'm about to get into my story and how much you've affected me and, and, and your material. But I really believe what you just said resonated and made a ton of sense with me because I get the question a lot, you know, um, how were you able to have confidence in yourself at an early age? And I really believe it was my parents instilling the confidence and those positive, encouraging words, just like you talked about my mother and my father. Yes. Uh, and that gave me a tremendous advantage, hugely grateful and was amazing blessing. And, and so my parents were uh, that positive influence for me and they made me believe just like you just said, for whatever reason, Yes, I, I don't. I don't know if they listened to you and then and then implemented that in me. I don't know, but I do know that uh, they made me believe I could accomplish anything in life. Period. Yeah. Yes, and and they, you you don't understand. Parents don't understand that uh, that you are the greatest single influence in the life of your children. And I say uh, I've taught this to so many people, but I say whenever you see an adult who is has problems. Uh, you see a bad childhood is that the parents, my, my parents gave me no support at all. Uh, the only thing that they did was criticize me. Uh, I, uh, I say this, and if you've, if you've reviewed my material, I'll say that destructive criticism is the, is the cancer in uh, all of human life is when parents criticize their children, it just is like a punch in the emotional gut and um, it holds them back. And, and, and causes them to doubt themselves uh, more and more. <clears throat> and the opposite is constant encouragement, constantly telling them that they're good and, and, and complimenting them on uh, everything that they do. Even if they just do something little, always tell them how good they are, how great they are, how wonderful it was. Just make a big thing of it. And my, my, my kids are, are so used to hearing me uh, talk to them. They say, oh, dad, you're always saying that. And then they look at the, their, 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 their friends, and they find that their friends don't get that. And then they realize, it takes them many years, they realize, wow, wow, what, what they're getting from me and from Barbara uh, is, is very rare. And so they, now three of my children are married, and um, they, uh, I'm sorry, yeah, three of them are married, and they do the same things with their children. They're constantly telling their children how good they are. And their children are just so happy. The children laugh and they run around and they're happy. And there's, you know, like that Western song, never is heard a discouraging word, is that there's just no negative conversation in their lives. And, uh, and that means they get better grades and they're more popular and they uh, uh, like other people, they like themselves. And that's what we need to do. And I think it sounds like your parents were really great. And so you uh, will be a great parent uh, when your children come along. The most wonderful thing in the world. I'm now 77. I just turned 77 a month ago. Wow. And um, uh, as I look back, I realize that this is the most important thing in my life is, is what happened to my children. And we look at the kids and we talk to them. And, and they, our kids just sort of bask, right? Like, like sitting in the sun, they just bask in the warmth of continuous approval, continuous um, positive feedback. And um, so you just keep on doing that, keep on doing that. And it's wonderful because you continually build your children up and it makes you feel happy and it makes them feel happy. And then they will marry someone who uh, has the same philosophy of life is they feel positive and they feel happy. It's just a, it's a, just a wonderful continuing circle. And that's, uh, that's what we need to do as, um, uh, as salespeople. The most powerful statement I ever learned was the words, I like myself. And you've, heard, you've heard me talk about that. I like myself. I like myself. I like myself. I like myself. And the more you say it, the more you depress or push down uh, thoughts uh, of uh, self-doubt uh, and the more you feel positive and encouraged about yourself. So I have so many of my friends in sales that'll get themselves cranked up uh, just before they go into a call or pick up the telephone as they'll say to themselves, 
I don't like myself, I like myself, I like myself. And then they pick up the phone or they knock on the door or they walk in, I like myself, I like myself, I like myself. And what that does is it just lowers all their fears and all of their doubts. And they just feel happy about themselves. And as a result, their relationships with their clients are excellent as well. Anyway, so so that's what we do. I love that. I love that. Well, I need to formally thank you for the positive influence that you had on my life. Um, our, our viewers, we had over 10,000 register for, for, for this. And, oh, wow. and they've heard me recommend you time and time again. They've heard me th that your book, The Art of Closing the Cell, uh, was the first sales book I ever picked up. Um, I love the story of how you were going house to house. People, you tell, people were telling you they want to think about it. They want you to call them back. And I started to implement that and was able to close a lot more deals immediately without, without having to follow up with people. Also, um, I've recommended that other salespeople in the insurance industry do that as well. And they've seen a lot of um, positive encouragement feedback from using that and it's worked for them too. So thank you for um, being a big help to me making six figures my first year and the hundreds of thousands of other people that you've been able, possibly millions probably that you've been able to help as well. So thank you very much. Yeah, that's wonderful. Thank you. You're very welcome. Yeah, that's that, that's amazing. And, and I, I've been uh, following you for 10, 11 years since I first got in, the, in, in, in this into sales. And I, and I thought, you know what? Um, I've been looking forward to today and our time together uh, just because of how much I've looked up to you. And, and so, again, thank you for everything you've done. I, I want to uh, transition to 8% comes from the fact that 92% of insurance agents fail in their first three years. Wow. What, what does nine, what, what, what does 8% mean to you knowing that statistic well it's, it's sort of like any kind of a skill uh, the skill of selling is like the skill of typing it's like the the skill of riding a bicycle it's a it's a learnable skill and it's something that you can learn through continuous practice and a lot of people don't understand that and when uh i started off in selling and knocking on doors and knocking on doors and uh, after six months i was just still struggling and there was one guy at our office and I tell this story, his name was Pete and I still see his face wow. after all these years. And um, Pete was selling 10 times as much as anybody else uh, in, in, in the company. We had about 15 people. And uh, I would start working at seven or eight in the morning, knocking on doors. And Pete would start at nine or 10 o'clock and he would take time off for lunch and he would quit at uh, 4.30 or five. Wow. And, um, he just had a great life and he earned more money than anybody else. And one day I asked him, I said, Pete, why, why is it that you earn so much more uh, than I do? And he said, well, show me your sales presentation and I'll critique it for you. And I said, geez, I don't have a sales presentation. I had heard about a sales presentation. I sometimes joke and I say it was like something on the other side of the, of the moon is I knew that was, there was a, a sales presentation out there, but I'd never seen one and i said well i don't have a presentation he said well what do you do when you get face to face with a prospective customer and i said oh i just i tell them how good uh, our product is and, and and how helpful it is and how much it's better than anybody else and everything and he said no no i remember i remember this we, we, we had an office in this office building third floor and we went downstairs and across the street and we're sitting on a park bench uh, this big city park, a city park, but, and he said, he said, that's not how you, you sell. What you do is you don't talk, you ask questions. And I said, ask questions, because I was told you have the gift of the gap. You know, you, you, you can talk really well. And he said, no, 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 ask questions and listen closely to the answers. And over the years, I found is that, that your ability to ask questions and listen to the answers in a positive way is really the key to successful selling. And a good friend of mine, uh, one of my best friends now, top sales guy, uh, he said, uh, remember, listening builds trust. Listening builds trust. Well, how do you get a chance to listen? Well, you ask questions. You ask good questions and you lean forward, you lean into the question. And, uh, and when you listen closely, people warm up to you. And listening builds trust. And the more you listen, the more they trust you and the more they like you and the more they're open to being influenced by you. 
And I still remember those were some of the most important things is that, wow, listening builds trust. So I asked questions. I just kept asking more questions. And what about this? And what about that? And what are you doing now? And how is that working for you? And uh, what are your goals? What are your plans for the future? And it was constantly asking questions. Changed my whole life. Instead of trying to persuade or influence people, instead, listen to them and try to help them. Uh, when I do seminars, when I hit the peak, I was doing seminars. My average seminar was 1,600 people for more than 20 years. Um, and sometimes it was 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, with gusts up to um, uh, 5,000. My biggest seminars were uh, 20,000, uh, 25,000. And um, it was wonderful. And it was so helpful to people. They leaned forward. And in my seminars, one of the things I learned is to ask questions. Rather than talking and trying to impress people, ask them questions about themselves and what they're doing, what their goals are, and, and so on. And it was just so wonderful. And it's the same thing with you. You, you are going to be uh, a great speaker um, in the years ahead. Uh, and you'll find that when, when I start off with the audience, I start off by asking them questions and asking them and follow-up questions and more follow-up questions. And people love it when you ask them questions and listen because, because questions um, encourage them to really think deeply about what it is they're doing. And, uh, and so uh, I, would ask, I would ask people uh, questions and then I would give them answers and ask more questions and give them more answers and so on. And that's how I got to where I am today. I would uh, ask questions and give answers and tell them how, how to use the information. So many people, I'm happy, have become millionaires. Uh, uh, my friends at Nightingale Conant uh, did a research uh, study uh, on people who used my materials. They found that, mo that, that more people, more salespeople became millionaires as a result of using my materials than any other single influence. And of course, everybody wants to be a millionaire. And yes, you can become a millionaire. And what you do is you do what millionaires do. And good millionaires. It's interesting. One of the richest people in the world is Mark, is, is, uh, Mark Zuckerberg, and um, president of um, uh, Facebook. And they say he's got a five to one ratio in terms of uh, listening um, and speaking. Is that uh, he uh, asks questions five times for every one time that he uh, talks or comments or gives guidance. And it's just an interesting thing. It's just he just continually asks more questions and takes notes and and so on. And so it's a very good thing to remember. And and I see you taking notes. That's a very smart thing. The, the, the most success the most successful people take notes all the time. And um, it's just a, it, what it does is it helps you to think uh, at a at a deeper level and also to review the material. I'm always astonished. I, I'm, I, I would say, say, okay, please write this down. And people in my audiences, go, you got to go an extra pencil, or you got an extra pen. Is they, they come to a, a full day seminar and they don't have a pencil, they don't have a pen, they don't have anything to write with. I just shake my head, SMH, SMH, shaking my head, shaking my head. Yes, I can't believe that. I can't believe that people would go to a seminar without preparation to write things down. And so that's another thing is um, make sure that when People come to your uh, seminars is that they uh, are supplied with uh, writing materials and and so on and so I always uh, carry a, a red pen and a blue pen and my, my kids would ask me dad do you have a pen I say what do you want red or blue red or blue <laughs> you I've always got two and one is to underline uh, in red and, and and blue is to is to make a note and um, and so my kids now carry pens around and they hear something good they immediately write it down uh, napoleon hill had this wonderful one-liner he said um and when you think it ink it mm. i thought that was really cute when you think it ink it if you have an idea uh when an idea goes through your mind like a comet immediately write it down because if you don't you will forget it you'll lose it and sometimes you'll have one good idea that can change your life 
And if you don't write it down, you'll think, geez, what was that idea? And uh, then you find, meet somebody else who had that same idea as well. And uh, sometimes it's just one simple idea that changes your life. One of the things for our friends who are watching is uh, how important it is uh, to take notes and to read, is to just dedicate yourself to continuous learning. This is, I say that there's three things in, in, in my life and uh, I talk about these three, I call them the golden triangle of success, like a triangle. And when I look back over my life, I realized that there were three great things. Number one is to accept responsibility for your life. Don't complain, uh, don't make excuses, uh, don't blame other people for your problems, always accept responsibility. Uh, and number two is to have goals, clear written goals and plans. And number three is Dedicate yourself to continuous learning. It always be learning. You look behind me. I was just reading a, an article uh, on me that was in uh, on uh, yeah in, in in YouTube. It wasn't in YouTube. It was on uh, it was on Google. And somebody had done a complete research. It was called it was called Twenty Things That You Don't Know About Brian Tracy. Well, I'd never seen this before, so I read it. And one of them is that it said, Brian Tracy has read more than 7,000 books. And I thought, oh. and yes, that's true. I must have said it somewhere. You see these books, these are all double stacked. So there's, there's two books in every shelf from the top to the bottom. All you can see is the middle, but the bottom, the top. And uh, this is just in my office and it goes all the way around, but it's also outside. It's, uh, and in other rooms, it's up downstairs. It's, you know, my whole house is just full of books. And I may not have read them all, but I continue to buy and read books. And then sometimes you just come across one idea and you say, geez, that's a good idea. Geez, it's a good idea. And then, and then, and then you have uh, an opportunity. Here's something really interesting. I found that, and I, I studied metaphysics in my 20s. I came across as a Russian school of metaphysics. And, and what they taught was that you never learn a subject without having very soon an opportunity to learn or to use that new material. Yes. As you, you learn the material and very soon you get a chance to use it. And I thought, well, that's interesting. And for the rest of my life, I realized you, you read an article on something, you find it in a book or a magazine, and uh, very soon afterwards, you have an opportunity to use that material to improve your life or the life of someone else. And, um, and so therefore, you, you must dedicate yourself to lifelong learning. For the rest, you're just always learning. Uh, back in the day, my uh, f first activity on the weekends was to go to bookstores. And I would take my kids to bookstores. And I told my children, I said, there's no, there's no budget for books. You can have all the books that you want. And so we would go to bookstores every single weekend uh, and sometimes more than one. Uh, our, our favorite bookstore was a Barnes and Noble. And we would go there and we would go from shelf to shelf and place to place. And, and they, they, they say, can, dad, can, dad, can I have this book? Can I get this book? I said, no budget for books, no limits. You can have all the books that you want. And so we would go there and the whole, the whole four kids, they'd come up with their shopping bags full of books. Then they have their own bookshelves with, uh, with books. Then they have their bookshelves at home. It was, just, it was just wonderful. And they just read all the time. As they, of course, they watch television, but um, very often you, they'd be there when other kids are, are watching television or playing video games, my kids would be reading. They just read and read and read and and uh, they're successful and they're happy. And the wonderful thing about reading is, is it gives you a feeling of personal power. You, you learn these things. And, and uh, quick subject change, uh, my uh, son Michael came to me when he was about 21, 22 years old, he finished school. And um, he was not a great student, um, but uh, he finally got through college. And then he came to me and he said, Dad, he said, I, I want to be successful. What, what do I need to do to be successful like you? Because, you know, we live in a nice house and we have a good life. And I said, well, you could do the same thing I did. 
And what was that? I said, well, I uh, learned how to sell. I went out and I knocked on doors and I learned how to sell. And he said, well, how could I, how could I get a job knocking on doors? And I said, well, I just gave a seminar for a big company. In fact, the uh, gentleman that uh, brought me in to speak uh, just just died a couple of weeks ago. And um, he said, I, he said I, could, I can get you a job with him because they have branches all over the country knocking on doors. And so uh, I called him up and he called the, uh, his uh, manager in, 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 in San Diego and we got Michael a job knocking on doors. And he went out and he just knocked on doors. And he knocked on doors 12 hours a day. He just knocked on doors. And uh, he works six days a week. Uh, uh, and he worked about 10, 12 hours a day. And he was very hard. He, he, I said, you, if you get this job, you're going to get more rejection than you ever dreamed was possible. Mm. You've had a good life. You've, you've not been rejected. But now you're going to be rejected. And uh, he said it was true. So, so he said it was the hardest thing in the world. He went out every day and uh, he would start knocking on doors at about uh, 10 or 11 o'clock and he would work until nine or 10 o'clock and he would do it uh, six days a week. And uh, it was really hard, but eventually he learned how and he just kept hanging in there and learned how and eventually he became a sales supervisor and a sales manager and he began recruiting people and, and training people and after a year he came to me and he said i've got it he said dad he said i'll never have to worry about money for the rest of my life because i can sell That's no, awesome. no matter what happens i could sell and uh and so today by the time he was 25 he had a mercedes in his own house and uh he was smoking and he's uh, married, three children, he's doing well, and he's, uh, he's everything that you would want. Um, just and, and the idea of quitting never occurs to him. Never occurs. To him. This this time today in the marketplace is very tough because of the coronavirus and the fact that you can't call on people. But uh, he just keeps slogging away, and he's now become a sales trainer, a speaker, and he's doing it very well. He, he uh, comes to uh, my, my seminars uh, and came to my seminars and learned how to speak. And he speaks really well. So it's, uh, it's wonderful. And you can learn anything you need to learn to achieve any goal you can set for yourself. I say that over and over again. Mm. And, uh, yeah, I, I love that you say that because that's something that holds a lot of people back in our industry is not having goals, fear of rejection. I, I used to door knock every day for, for years as well. And while listening to your audiobooks when I would be in the car between between places, and and what would you say to those that are, because the only reason an agent would ever become part of the eight percent, uh, the ninety two percent and fail, is if they choose to quit. And I really believe the theme of this virtual conference is if you don't quit, you can't fail. That's very good. That's very good. If you don't quit, you can't fail. That's the most wonderful thing. I mean, I always I've always told my children is just never give up, never give up, never give up. And uh, you'll have all kinds of setbacks and rejections and difficulties. But uh, I used to do this, and I'll pass this on to you because uh, many years ago, I was, uh, I had this girlfriend, her name was Heather, I still remember. She was a very smart girl, sort of like insightful and so on. And, and one day we were, I still remember, we were walking all, along the street and she asked me, what is your best quality? And this is after I'd spent years traveling all over the world and everything else. What do you think is your best quality? Mm. I've never heard that question before. And so I thought about it as we walked along. And I said, well, my best quality is that I am unstoppable. I'm mm. unstoppable. I never give up. And I look back over my life and I realized that is my best quality. And I never thought about it to that minute. So I was, I've told this to my audiences, 1,000, 2,000 people. I said, what is the most important quality for you to have to be successful in selling? And the answer is to be unstoppable. Mm. Now, one of the things that I teach is that you, know, you become what you think about most of the time. Yes. Uh, but also you become what you say to yourself most of the time. 
when you talk to yourself in a in a positive way, that is accepted by your subconscious mind as an instruction. So how do you become unstoppable? And everybody in the audience and all, I would ask them, what is the most important quality? And they I say, and they say the quality is to become unstoppable. So how do you become unstoppable? And the answer is this. Whenever you have a setback or a difficulty, just say to yourself the three magic words. I am unstoppable. Mm. I am unstoppable. Now say it. Say it. Oh, yeah, say it. So people yeah. say, well, I'm, I'm unstoppable. I said, no, 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 no. Don't suck your thumb. Say it like you mean it, all right? Say, I am unstoppable. So the second time they would say, I am unstoppable. I said, no, 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 geez. Say it like you believe it. And, and, and they would say, I am unstoppable. No more. I am unstoppable. And the whole audience would shout, I'm unstoppable. And that's great. I said, now for the rest of your life, whenever you have a thought or a feeling uh, of hesitating or holding back, you say to yourself, I am unstoppable. I am unstoppable. I am unstoppable. And the fact is that when you say it, you program it into your subconscious mind. And you eventually begin to believe, I'm unstoppable. And your subconscious mind accepts it as a command. And over a period of time, not very long, sometimes the first day, you will say to yourself, I am unstoppable. I am, you know what, unstoppable. I never quit. I never quit. And uh, I taught my kids that. I, uh, when my kids were young, I would say to them, I say, you know, I know one thing about you. You never give up. Mm. I know one thing about you. You never give up. And they say, oh, dad, sure, 10 years old, 12 years. Oh, sure, I do. I mean, I, you know, I don't get good grades in school. I said, I said, no, you may have short time, short term setbacks, but way down deep inside, you never give up. You never give up. And then my uh, son, David, when he was about 10 years old, he was playing with a friend of his. And he said really loudly, I still remember this because it was such a wonderful one. He said really loudly, he said, well, I know one thing about myself. I never give up. Mm. He, he said it really loud, like, like basically like this is just a, a fundamental truth. I never give up. And uh, all my kids are the same way. They never give up. It doesn't occur to them. They have setbacks and difficulties and they change things and they fail uh, temporarily, but they never give up. Mm. And uh, one of the things that you can do to have a positive influence on other people is to tell them that you never give up. If you keep, you keep reminding yourself of that, you'll have times where you will think about giving up. You'll, you'll think about quitting. Uh, you're going to have all kinds of difficulties in life. That's normal and natural. But just keep reminding yourself, I am unstoppable. I am unstoppable. Mm. And what happens eventually, it's programmed in permanently. And no matter what happens to you out there, is you just never give up. And that is the most important quality for success of all. Once you have that, your, your life is made. And if you can teach people this, and if we can teach our friends who are watching today, just keep saying those magic words. I am unstoppable. I am unstoppable. Whenever you think of, of, of quitting, say, wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> I don't quit. I'm unstoppable. I am unstoppable. And it, and, and it, it sounds like, a, like hype, but it's not. Everything that you are is a result of information that you've taken in. So now what you do as an adult is you control the information flow. You control the information flow. You hear it and you see it and people say things to you and so on. You say, okay. And sometimes we've had parenting situations where our parents didn't understand this. And so our parents uh, may not have been that supportive. You say, okay, well, it's sort of like at a, you, at a certain age, you take over control of the wheel. You get behind the wheel of your own life. You decide uh, what you're going to be. And you're going to be unstoppable. If you're unstoppable, then your, your success in life is guaranteed. So anyway, that, that's just something to pass on because everything else will work. Yeah. You, yeah. That, that's amazing, buddy. I could, I could, I could listen to you all day. I am unstoppable. Yes. Uh, I want to ask you one last question. I know we're getting close on time. Um, again, this has been truly unbelievable. What, what's, I feel like the biggest thing that insurance agents struggle with specifically is closing the deal. You yeah. are, 
one of the best closers on the planet. How can you help others become the exact same thing right now? Well, um, you remember the famous story of the the uh, man on the streets of um, New York, and he asked the hippie. He said, uh, "He says, uh, how do I uh, get to Carnegie Hall? Remember that?" Yes. And, and the answer is practice, man, practice. Yes. And the answer is practice, man, practice. The reason you are where you are today is practice. You learn it, learn and do, learn and do, learn and do. Just practice over and over. And you can learn anything. Now, you may not become uh, a genius, uh, but you can learn any subject. You, you, you are a learning machine. You just, you automatically learn. You absorb new material. And uh, so, therefore, I say, well, I want to be good at it. First thing I do is I get a book. I have, uh, I was reading about uh, having uh, books on uh, Amazon and that you could actually write your own book and you could put it on Amazon. So I told people, you know, you can write your own book. And, and uh, then I realized I had lots of books on Amazon, but they were all put on there by publishers. And so I said, okay, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write my own book. I'm going to follow the process of writing a book and putting it on Amazon. And so I looked onto Amazon and there are several free books. There are 30, 40, 50, 60 pages on how to write a book on Amazon. And, and you, you, you could just, after the end of our conversation here, just go to Amazon and just put in um, how to write a book and they'll give you several different choices. Now, and if, you, if they sell you the book, the book is going to be five dollars, four dollars. They're not not very expensive at all. So I just got three or four books, and I read them through, and I learned how to write a book, and I wrote a book, and I said, "What book would I write?" And I said, "I'll write a book on closing sales." And so I, I so I wrote a book. I, so I think it's I think it's called "Close That Sale," and it's five dollars and ninety nine cents. Ooh. Yeah, and. Uh, and uh, so uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm think, I, I think I sold it as a Kindle book, but I don't recall. And I have my, uh, my creative person. I said, I want to get this book onto uh, Amazon. And she said, okay. And she familiarized herself with the instructions. It's like a recipe, just a little recipe, follow the recipe. And um, so we put it up there and it's called Close That Sale. And it's the 24 sales closing techniques that I started off with many years ago. Uh, it was interesting. Um, I started speaking in 1981, which was it was which was at the depths of a major recession, and uh, I uh, had to get people in the room. And I figured, how can I get people in the room? And I said, well, I could do a seminar uh, on on closing sales. That's what everybody wants to know. The, the one thing that salespeople want to know. So I put an ad in the paper, and it's called uh, 24 uh, Techniques for Closing the Sale. And I charged $95 for the seminar, three hours in the evening, seven to 10. And um, I had, I was really nervous uh, because I had uh, never done a seminar like this before. And 100 people came to my first seminar. I put an ad in the paper, 100 people came. And I, I guaranteed it. I said, if you're not happy for any reason, have your money back. And that was my starting, starting on my, my kickoff in uh, speaking, professional speaking. And uh, I had, I think about 95, yeah, 9,500 people in my first seminar. And what I did is I put together a really nice booklet on closing the sale. But, it's, but it was all the things that you have to do before you close the sale. It had 24 techniques, but the first, the first thing you had to do is you had to make sure you were speaking to the right person, um, qualifying. You had to be sure that they understood the value of the offering. You had to be sure that you understood what they needed and so on. And then you had to get them to the point where they were ready to uh, buy. And then here's diff here's 24 different ways that you can ask for the sale. And, and, and you'll notice that there's no pressure. There's no tricks. There's no uh, ways to uh, force people to buy. Everything is really low pressure, no pressure friendly. And, um, that was my starting point. That's my, my kickoff in professional selling. And uh, I had never written a book. I certainly learned a lot about it, and I had lots of information. So uh, if anybody wants to learn how to close a sale, you just go to Amazon, 
And there it is. I think it's five ninety nine. dollars uh, But here's the wonderful thing that I discovered is one of the major reasons why people are afraid of prospecting is because so often they get rejected at the end of the presentation. So if they know that they're going to get rejected at the end of the presentation, they don't even make go and make calls in the first place. Yeah, they say, yeah. why, why should I make? If I told you, I um, I just came up with this when I was speaking to a huge audience, uh, this one-liner. And I said, if uh, your company uh, hired a marketing specialist company and they could go and interview and they could identify 100 people who would buy today if you contacted them. Mm-hmm. And here's the list. It's a specialized list. It's for you. And every one of these people will buy if you contact them today. But the the, the list is only good from nine to five. Mm. After that, the list expires. All right. So, so here's my question to you. If you got this list the night before, what would you do the next day? What would you do the next day? Yeah, well, I, I get up early and I'd hit it as soon as nine o'clock, almost like a horse in a race jing is I'd hit it and I started moving. I said, would you take time to drink coffee and, and talk with your friends and read the newspaper and then go for lunch and BS and all of this stuff? What would you do? You'd be moving as fast as you could because every person you spoke to is going to buy. Every person you spoke to is going to buy. And so you just keep moving as fast as you can. I said, well, and that at the end of the day, if you, you're not going to get to 100 people but you're, you're certainly get, get to a lot of people. So from now on, imagine that. Imagine everybody you speak to is going to buy. So therefore, spend every single minute getting face-to-face with people. And with that confidence, that feeling that, wow, if I get face-to-face with these, and you, you'll find that one out of 10 people will buy in any market. One out of 10 people will buy. So therefore, what you do is you may decide uh, you're going to get in front of as many people as possible, and one in ten will buy. Just keep moving as fast as you can. If they don't buy, you say thank you very much. Have a good day. Wonderful thing. Here's my card. Give me a call if I can uh, be of any assistance to you and get to the next one. Get to the next one because one of ten is going to buy. So keep moving, keep moving, keep moving, keep talking to people, and and, uh, and you're going to make sales one out of ten, virtually guaranteed. In the worst markets of all, with the worst product, with the worst skills, you're going to make sales one out of 10 times. And so when you have that attitude, is that it, it, just the, just the law, it, it's called the law of probabilities. The law of probability says that the one out of 10 people you speak to, if you have a little bit of uh, intelligence, um, will buy. So therefore, just get up and m- start moving first thing in the morning and don't stop. Keep moving. And here's the most wonderful thing I say. If, um, if you call more and more, uh, on more and more people. What happens to your skill level? What happens to your skill? Yes, exactly. Your skill level goes up. You get better and better uh, at calling on people. And when you get better and better, you make more sales. When you make more sales, you have more confidence. When you make more confidence, you, you want to make more sales. And pretty soon, you can hardly wait. And the wonderful thing is the more you call on people, the better you get. The better you get, the happier you are. The better you get, the happier you are. The more sales you make, the more money you make, and so on. It's, this, is, this is just simply the way that you program your mind. And all the best salespeople do this, is they just smile. First one says, no, I don't want it, don't need it. You say, well, thank you very much for your time. You have a wonderful day. And if I can be of any service to you, please give me a call. And uh, keep moving, keep moving. And um, that's the attitude that you have to have to be successful. So good, so good. Mr. Tracy, I've taken up a t- uh, probably too much of your time, but I'm gracious for everything that you've done with us. Thank you so much for sharing today with 8% Nation. Well, I appreciate you calling me and giving me the opportunity to speak to your friends. And I, uh, I'm really happy to meet you and see you. And we will work together again. I hope so, buddy. Thank you so much. Also, those that are watching, make sure you go to Amazon and grab. I'm going right now after to grab Close That Sell. Uh, Mr. Tracy, thank you so much. You've been an unbelievable influence in my life and so many. And thank you so much for being on today. Thank you very much, Cody. 
See you. Talk to you again. Yes, sir. You too. Thank you guys for watching. Closing that cell and you are unstoppable. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Bye bye, my friend. Hey, if you enjoyed this, I got another one you're going to love. It's right there. Click on it. See you in there. Here's what I want to leave you with, okay, before we go. I want to leave you with my eight rules to 8%. I want to guarantee that you are a part of the 8% forever, right? Like if I look back over the last decade, here's the eight rules.